continuing coverage of Carly Gregg's murder trial. This is Hunter Lewis on the stand, the sheriff's officer patrol guy who was on the scene. And we're going to play just a little bit of this, and then we're going to get to... Um, the prosecution is examining him, Sheriff Lewis, and but really don't need to look at that, right? Because he's just saying, yeah, is this the video? Is this what, what happened that day? Yeah. So we're going to play a little bit of this and look at Carly boohooing because she knows what's fixing to come up. Obviously, she knows because they, they've not talked to him a little bit. Okay, I'm going to put the link in the description. You can go watch the whole thing if you want. Um, so she's already crying. She knows that, that what, what they're fixing to play the body cam footage of showing up. I'm going to play a little bit of that. But really, I want to get to the uh, cross-examination. And where is he going to go with this? Uh, her attorney is going to cross-examine the sheriff who was on the scene with a body cam footage which I haven't watched it yet so I'm interested to to know what is he, how is he going to question this guy and why what is he going to ask him all right here's Carly she she's clearly upset after they were talking to, to him here we go The footage does seem to freeze up, so that's not on my part. That was on the live feed from um, Law and Crime. Look! Look at the look on um, their attorney's face. Look at, look at the woman attorney. It's like they're just, this is a lost cause. It's on their face. It's on their face. Carly's just oh man. She is crying boo hoo, and she knows. She is in big big trouble. What she has done. But look at the look on, on her attorney's face. It's like, how are we going to deal with this? We've got a mountain to climb. And no, and no climbing gear. There's no gear. Hey, where's your wife at, bud? Where's your wife at? She's good on the floor where's in she? that room. <laughs> She's where? Her attorney is consoling her. I just saw her hand go up and, and rub her on the back. It's like, oh, my God. They're there. I don't know, guys. It's just kind of weird. Let me know if I'm, I'm wrong about all of this, but you're consoling her. Like, what do you say? It's okay. No, it's not okay. <laughs> Boy, I don't even know how how to... To begin to deal with that. You're boohooing because of what you've done. Yeah. You need to sit there and boohoo. Where's And to hear somebody wail in agony, which is a true wail, his wife is dead. He, this guy is in shock. I, I can't even imagine. And this little monster did it. I need you to go. <laughs> 
What's your son wearing? Hey, can you, can you tell me what your son's wearing? Hey, I need you to talk to me. What is your son wearing? He was in jeans and a, a, a t grass t-shirt. He's got short brownish hair. So, jeans, a grass t-shirt, short brown hair. She ran into the backyard. I tried to follow her. She jumped the switch and ran. She shot me she in the neck. So he he's assuming it's a boy who did this. The the police officer. He realizes it's a girl. It's okay. Does she still have the gun? It's on the kitchen counter. I think there's one light round left in it. I opened the cylinder. I went in the back door. She tried to shoot me. I, I need some gloves. I'm a, I'm a, He's saying that she ran towards Magnolia Place. He, he's grazed, but he's, he's too soon. It went through his shirt. He's lucky he's not dead. That is amazing that she didn't shoot him. She, she wasn't waiting at the door. And then blam, blam, as soon as he opened the door. I don't, I don't know how. I haven't seen video footage of him coming into the house. Or she probably already removed the camera, I'm assuming. Because we haven't seen any footage of that. At least I haven't. And I'm still diving into this. But, right? He's lucky he's alive. You got me right there. My nobody plays the game to start a vision. She went over the side back towards my vehicle. She might have looked around this way. Might have looked back going back towards the pond right there. He had just said she's laying in the floor with a towel. I think that's what the officer said. And then they put the camera back on Carly because they, they just went and looked at uh, her mother's body. There's the, the delay we're having. Okay, so y'all know the, the incident with the school shooting uh, a couple of weeks ago, and they're charging the father. They're charging him because he gave the boy the gun. Now, I'm just curious... Does that affect people in the household when somebody, when, when a young person gets the weapon that their parents have in the bedroom under the mattress and she had access to it? I mean, this is tragic. Don't, don't misunderstand. I'm just bringing up things that the liberals love to do. They love to attack uh, people who own weapons, but they never... They didn't suspect her to be crazy. Yes, yeah, she was cutting herself. Was she smoking pot? She's a typical teenager. But would they think that, my God, is she going to go in and get the gun and try to kill us? Now, the defense said in her opening statements that 
they were the mother was afraid that Carly would have the same mental problems that her father has. I don't know. So then now Carly knows where a gun is. Just I'm just asking questions here. It is a tragedy all around. But I wonder if that will get addressed in the in the trial. It, it's pausing. It's pausing, guys. I can't. I can't help that. That that was when it was streaming live on Law and Crime. The, they're uh, they're in the house. Seriously. It's a good point. Now that officer was thinking, good, you know how juveniles are. Look everywhere, hiding under the bed, hiding in the closet. The guy said, we didn't go that far. Are you kidding me? Why would you not? That, that guy wearing full body armor, he knows what he's doing. He said search everywhere before y'all waste resources searching her outside. Now, they obviously, they found her out walking on the road, but he was right to do that. She's having to sit there and watch this, people. Look at her. Wow, she's had a rough morning. Now, remember during the opening prosecution statement, no tears, no nothing. She looked visibly shaken, visibly scared. The defense comes up, does her opening. Carly's boohooing. All of the cut because they're talking about her. That's why I think she's a sociopath and narcissistic. And then now she's boohooing and all through this. I'm just, just giving my opinion. There she is kind of looking in a daze like, well, she's been crying for what, an hour? She's probably exhausted, mentally exhausted. But look at the look on her face. Good night. No telling what she's thinking. Okay. 
Somebody just wrote in the comment that since she's showing some emotion, it means she's not insane or crazy. I couldn't, I couldn't read all of it, and I'm not going to stop and go back, but uh, I'll put the link in the description because some of the comments are like, whoa. Um, and some of them are still making fun of the guy on the stand because he's overweight, like they were making fun of the, the, nine, the 911 operator. I don't know what's wrong with these people. But uh, just because she shows emotion doesn't mean she's sane or insane. It's when she has the emotion. That's what the experts look at. I'm not an expert, but everybody's watched the body language guy or the body language panel, and they were like former FBI trainers. And yeah, I watch that stuff because I don't have a life. But they look for stuff like that. Like when somebody's, uh, a family comes out, Let's say, for instance, and y'all have probably seen this stuff, they come out and their kid's missing, right? And they come out to the public and the news is filming them and they're talking. Guess what? They've, they've already called somebody. They've got a body language expert that's analyzing every word that comes out of their mouth, how their eyes are moving, shifting, blinking, everything. Are they talking in pants, past tense, present tense? They pick up on all of this stuff. It's fascinating. It's really fascinating. Now, like again, I'm not an expert, but I did notice it. But the, the, the two reactions between the, the prosecution and the defense opening statements of her body language was very evident. And then here she's, she's really pouring it on when she hears her father in, in agony. The police are there. She, you know, what does that mean? It means her ship has sank. That's what I'm thinking it means. But it seemed clear to me that she was showing those signs uh, at the first part of the, 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 when the trial started. An hour ago. She switched on a dime. All right, they're in the process of looking at her. We're going to go ahead and switch gears to the... Um, It's freezing up. They're still looking for her. They hadn't found her at this point. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward to um, the defense is going to cross-examine the, the sheriff. Deputy Lewis, um, I heard a call out there. Um, well, here, listen to this. That, uh, that they got her at 1735. Is that 535 p.m.? Yes, sir, it is. Okay. And um, did what did you know about whether or not um, uh, custody at that time? I'm sorry, say that again? What, what did they mean whenever they said that they took her into custody at 1735? They took her into custody at 535. <laughs> and do you know who, who that was that they were talking about? Yes, sir, it was one of our... All right. So that... The, the defense attorney is not going to use the video, so they just asked him to move it away. Here we go. You don't have to plug it necessarily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. One moment. Is Carly thinking, how is my attorney going to gonna cross-examine this guy to get me out of this fix? She probably doesn't even think, obviously she doesn't think like that. She's just a child. 
a narcissistic child who's a sociopath. Thank you, Your Honor. Now, Hunter, you were the first person on the scene, is that correct? Yes, sir, that is. And I guess you had to knock on the door a few times in order for to get Heat to come to the door, is that correct? Yes, sir. And I think when you answer, I guess when he comes to the door, you see him and he's talking on a cell phone, correct? Yes, sir, that is. And, it, and at that time, he's actually talking to the 911 dispatcher, correct? Yes, sir. And then... Did you have him go out? I wasn't, I wasn't 100% sure when I was looking at the video. Did you have him come out, or did, did he come out and, and sit down? Well, I asked him to come out. Okay. And so when he comes out, you notice he's been injured at that point. Or did you, I think you asked him if he was injured, or you, you were able to ascertain yes, that he was injured, right? Yes, sir. And then you had him sit down. Is that correct? Correct. Did that because you're you're looking out for his safety, and if somebody's been injured, you don't want them walking around and and possibly fainting and doing things like that. Is that correct? Yes, sir. So you were having him get on the or sit down, try to calm down, because at this point you're trying to get some information from him about what happened. Correct? Yes, sir. And I notice you you ask him what happened. He's telling you that. I guess somebody had had shot him. Is that correct? Said that again, sir. You were asking what happened, and he said somebody had shot him. Is that correct? I don't recall that, sir. Okay, he didn't tell you somebody had shot him. Didn't you ask him what happened, and he said that his stepdaughter had shot him? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Now. It's been a year. They did just watch the video. But where is this line of questioning going? Uh, keep in mind, this is the defense's cross-examination of Hunter Lewis, who was the had the body cam on him at the scene. And I think it took you a couple times because you had asked, what does your son look like? And you and it took you a couple. You had to think to realize that it's actually a, a stepdaughter, not a stepson. Would that be correct? Yes, sir. And this is all on. I mean, this is all on video, correct? I mean, we just saw we just saw the video. This is all on video. Yes, sir. That's what we would call a body cam, right? Correct. Okay. And you have certain policy and procedures with the body cam, correct? Yes, sir. And I, and I think you had said. When you first uh, got up on the stand, you were asked about what, why you wear a body cam or, or what, the, what it is, and you said any time that you have interaction with the public. Yes, sir. And it's for your safety, and it's also for the safety of, of the, uh, I guess, the public, correct? Yes, sir. And you have certain policies that say as long as you're out there, you can't turn that body cam off, correct? Yes, sir. And that's a Rankin County Sheriff Department policy, right? Yes, sir. And that's, that's I guess, the if, if you're wearing a body cam, you are, I guess, and you're with the Sheriff Department, everybody follows the same procedures. Yes, sir. May I beg the court's indulgence? Please, I beg your indulgence. Where is this line of questioning going? Now, the defense is saying that the, we... Remember the defense opening statements? You're not going to find evidence of this. You're not going to find evidence of this and that. There was a whole list of stuff they were talking about. And that the police's story was gobbledygook. I'm paraphrasing, but y'all get it. Where is this going? 
Where is this line of questioning going? What? Did he turn his camera off? Oh, I don't know. What's going on here? No further questions. Where you at? Oh my God. That was pathetic. <clears throat> Dippy Lewis, uh, Mr. Camp was just asking you about body cams. Um, do you know whether investigators, in your personal knowledge, do you know whether the investigators with uh, the Rank County Sheriff's Office wear body cams? I don't know that, sir. Okay. And uh, the gentleman who showed up out there with the uh, white shirt on, who was that? Investigator Burnell. Okay. Court, court's in order. Nothing right here. By this way, the stand be excused by the state. Yes. By the defense. Yes, sir. All right, you can stand down. I'll approach real quick. I don't know, guys. Get deep further in, but that was body count. Uh. Body camera evidence. Day one of the trial. I guess I'm, I'm more interested in the defense's side. I don't know about y'all. I am way more interested in the defense's side. What is going on? Well, that wrapped up day one. I'd say a big zero. If we're keeping score... On points for the prosecution, Mississippi against Carly, the defense had diddly squat. Now they raised, what, a question about the body cam? I don't know. That was day one. So we had opening statements from both, and then you had the 911 operator come on. Play the, the 911 tape, which was devastating. Now you had the body cam cop guy get on. That was devastating. And then the, <laughs> the redirect on the defense on the cop with the body cam. So what is he raising something about? Well, do you always have it on? I mean, I didn't hear any probative questions other than that. Now, are we going to see more in day two? We're going to find out. So, there you have it. Let's move on to day two in the next episode.